Back to the Future gets released 4th of July weekend, 1985. It does $10, $11 million at the box office on about 1,000 screens, which was really a big hit. That was a big hit. The second weekend, it does better than the first weekend. That's when we said, oh my God. I remember being bowled away. You know, it just kind of got swept away into this giant success. I went over to London to, to do this uh, Family Ties Goes to London, and um, Back to the Future opened, and I was doing satellite interviews with people in the States. And, and, and I could tell from their response that it was really going to be something extraordinary. And, and then I get a phone call from my agents saying, this is the biggest movie in America. It will soon be the biggest movie in the world. And I didn't even know what that meant. I thought, oh, that's nice. They said, no, you don't understand. This is huge. This is massive. I was like, oh, yeah, cool, great, good. You know, I'll do better next time. And he said, no, it's great, it's great. And so then I kind of understood what was happening, but I didn't really fully get it until I got back. And that summer of 1985, for the next 12 weeks, 11 of those 12 weeks, Back to the Future was the number one movie in America. And then, you know, it took off worldwide and we were going to London to the royal premiere, it was going to Japan, it was working everywhere. And, you know, it was just fantastic. So we started thinking about, well, what about a sequel? People say to us, well, you guys must have known you were gonna do a sequel when you put that ending in there. Marty. Of course, we had no idea we were gonna do a sequel. You've gotta come back with me. Where? Back to the future.